The smaller your home, the more thought and effort has to go into the design to make sure that it's going to stay functional. This next Vado Wagon is a great example of a home that's done just that, while also keeping the design very playful. Hey Steve! How's it going Bryce? Welcome to Yendo Farm! Thank you, it's really good to meet you mate. <laughs> now, the very first work that I ever saw from you was the incredible dome homes that you built in Thailand. Mm. What is it that inspires you to build these incredible structures? Well, they're fun. I mean, you know, structures that you could climb on and swing around on are just fun and it lets you interact with your structure rather than just having a shelter you know like with this one you could climb on you know uh, the dome house was something I loved just climbing on and laying under the stars so it's the same with this one so the most important thing for me when I built this uh, this caravan um, was the playfulness I, I wanted it to be something that was just fun to, to interact with and also the versatility of it. I really wanted something that would be great whether it was raining, sunny, cold, hot. So I, I really like the versatility of the structure. You've definitely got a really amazing parking spot for it right now. Yeah, you step out and just drop right into the water. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, swims are good and uh, you're hearing the animals and the birds around, um, kangaroos. You'll be hearing some snorting tonight when they're around, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's great to be here. And then with this project here, how did this all come about? I've just been loving this farm my friends have, and I really wanted a little structure that I could sleep under the stars in and maybe move it around to different parts of the farm. It's about 140 acres, and so they have some really nice areas. And so I loved something that on, was on wheels, something I could close up and keep warm when it's cold and open up and be under the stars on a hot night. Yeah, so what have you called this project? I've been uh, calling it the Unity Wagon. Once I started building it and I started using all these different woods, I thought the Unity Wagon, but it, it, it kind of goes more beyond that. People will be coming in and, you know, uh, staying in it. So I think it's, you know, bringing people together. But uh, it started off as just bringing all these different woods in. You know, most of them are, are gum, spotted gum, red gum, burnt ash. The deck, uh, again, it's um, spotted gum. And uh, I have it so I could just fold it up when I'm on the road. It's got these telescopic legs, so when I park it uneven uh, land, it's, you know, I, I can still secure it pretty well. So how big is the wagon, actually? The, I bought a um, 5x10 trailer. And so I did some welding, and I extended the floor out a bit more to the sides. And, um, and of course, when I built the, the wood structure on top of this steel frame, it ended up going out a few feet in both directions. So I'm actually stretching that out. So mm. first of all, tell me a little bit about how you actually built this. Well, I, I started with the trailer and um, this friend uh, who's really good with you know, working with steel helped me do this steel frame. So it's like a, a skeleton for the, uh, for the caravan. And then another friend introduced me to a guy who has a friend that works at a mill, you know. And so all the wood you see here is all discarded wood from the mill. It's all offcuts that had big knots or the wood was warped. So I got it really cheap. But, you know, it was a lot of effort, you know, trying to get the wood, you know, a lot of it was, you know, warped. So trying to bend it into place, especially when it's bent steel and you're trying to bend the warped wood onto bent steel. It was a lot of work. But once you sanded it and hit that, put the oil on it, it was just, it's just beautiful. I was like, wow. It's like Christmas every time I did a board. Yeah. And just when you're actually working with a structure that's this shape, the second that you're actually not doing anything in square boxes, everything mm -hmm. becomes a lot more tricky, doesn't it? Yeah, I had a lot of head scratching to do for this project, but trying to make the wood do some of these curves, curving this direction and out, I mean, is really difficult. So I, we built a steam box and we're steaming wood, but even that was a bit much. So I ended up using rope instead of wood trim. And then for this rim, I ended up just doing little sections. And uh, so it all finally worked out, but a lot of experimentation in the beginning. Yeah. The rope looks really good as well. It adds a nice little organic touch to it. Yeah, it gives a bit more of a nautical feel to it because it's a bit boat-like. I'm almost wondering if it would float out into the water if it <laughs> rolled in there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very boat-like, so 
it worked as good. One of the things that I really like about this design is just how open to the elements it is. Mm. Yeah, when you're living in such a beautiful place, it's so great just to open it up and to have it so I could have it wide open, but you know, before the deluge comes down too hard, I could jump out and bring down the canvas and button it up. And uh, in the cool season, I got a you know a stove to warm it up. So it's just so versatile uh, in, in that regard. And um, you know, having the canvas be an awning, or it could be wrapped around, or it could be rolled up, makes it really nice. You know, the convertible nature of it has just been fantastic, and it works really well with uh, velcroing the fly screen because I could get it nice and tight around it, and the canvas just lays over really nice, really smooth. I am super excited to have a look on the inside of the wagon. Can we check it out? Absolutely. Come on in. Oh, now this is really cool. That feature window down the end is just such an incredible thing to walk in and see, isn't it? Yeah, that's one of my favorite features of, you know, I did that Thailand Dome home. The round windows seats were just really nice. So I definitely wanted that for the caravan. And uh, yeah, that's great. Sit inside, play my guitar. <laughs> Absolutely. And then you've got your bed here? Yep, when I was building the structure, you know, I started with that five by 10 trailer and uh, I was gonna do a bigger bed, but then it was gonna take away my other space. So by having a king single, but that expands um, using these cushions that are here, just makes it much better. So, it's, you know, I call it my optimistically expanding bed. So um, usually it's you know single, but if I ever get to share with somebody, then I could pull the bed out and um, have it more comfortable for two people. That's such a clever design. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, when you're working in a space this size, 10 feet, that is a really challenging amount of space to work with. Mm. And building in little features like that are just so clever for expanding the usability of the space. Yeah, yeah I love that You know, about tiny houses is getting the most out of your small space. So like the benches, of course, have uh, storage in the benches, um, lots of storage underneath here. Got these really nice deep um, drawers in, in the cubby holes. Uh, that was kind of an afterthought. You know, I started building the window and I had more of a space just around the window. I thought of, you know, I should be able to use that space a bit more. So I built a second wall and put shelves in these little cubby holes. And so the cubby holes serve as, you know, different purposes. They're it's storage, it's also some really cool lighting. And it's also steps for when I'm climbing up on top, I just step on the, the holes getting up. So, uh, yeah. And this is a really nice, comfortable seating area that you've got here. I get three people can sit on each bench and um, the table between is just really nice. If you just wanted to do a small bit of table and we'll come out all the way to the end of the benches. So I can actually sit seven people at the table, which for this tiny structure is pretty amazing to have some people sitting at the table and for a full-on party you gotta have people in the window and so yeah I, this, this can really be a fun social place it's really nice just to think about those kind of things in a space this size because mm. just because you're in a really tiny house doesn't mean that you don't want to sometimes have dinner parties and all that sort of thing yeah. especially in a lovely location like this mm -hmm. actually building in entertaining spaces like that is such a great idea yeah it's 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 really fun i've had some little gatherings in here it's just so great to have people hanging out in the window around here. It's just a really fun space to hang out, especially with the, the top open and uh, all the stars above us. Yeah, it's totally. nice. Because, you know, tiny house people have friends too, right? We do have <laughs> friends. So talk to me about cooking in this space because it's not a big kitchen, is it? Well, you know, by having the table that pulls out and then having this lid that goes over my sink gives me a bit more counter space. I'll be eventually building more shelves in here. They'll give me more area uh, for cooking. Uh, and when it's colder, I'm getting my stove on. That will um, cook for me. And uh, I have the space here that I'll be putting a, a portable stove on. So I'm, I can actually sit right here and just do a little, do my noodles or whatever, and or stoke the fire. So that's really nice. So what about electricity here? So I've got a small solar system and it runs the, the lights and also the lights and the, the cubby holes. That's all I need. Great, mm -hmm. and obviously the plumbing here is really simple. You've just got the, the urn there that you fill up. Yeah, and uh, as for now, I just have a container that collects the, the water. So I'm starting really simple and then I could always add things later. But so what about the insulation in this space? Well, I was thinking 
since I'm going to be just having canvas, you know, I wasn't really too worried about insulating the walls. You know, this stove actually puts out quite a bit of heat, so I'm, I'm quite toasty when I need to be. But, you know, later I could always add a more insulating uh, cover. So I could, you know, it could be, you know, insulated more in the future if I wanted to. So it's definitely a work in progress. But for right now, since a lot of the facilities are already on the farm here, I keep it pretty simple. So what do you do right now for a toilet, shower, all that sort of stuff? We have a uh, composting toilet. Actually, the, the shower, when it's a little cooler out, we want hot showers, we, have a, we build a big compost pile with a pipe running through it. So that actually heats the water and it'll last for a couple months. And we'll have like 60 people here on the farm uh, camping for a, a permaculture course and we'll have hot water from the compost pile. So how long have you actually been in the space now? Um, I just finished it recently. Uh, I went back to the States and I just, I've been back for a few days and just did a, a few more little uh, changes to it. Improving the, the pulley system was the main thing. And, uh, but yeah, I, only, I haven't had a whole lot of time sleeping in it, but it's been pretty special, the, the, the nights I have had in it. So far, what's your absolute favorite thing about the wagon? Ah, going to bed under the stars, that first night I, I slept in here, had it wide open, it was just an incredible starry sky. And, and in the morning above me is all these, you know, colored clouds and uh, it was just really beautiful. And um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty amazing. So do you actually have plans to travel with the wagon? I do, eventually. You know, right now it's just great hanging out on the farm. This, this farm is so special. We get some people all over the world coming to visit uh, and volunteer. And um, the permaculture, the working in harmony with nature uh, and the gardens, it's, it's just a really special place. And Michael and Lisa are, are, are amazing who own the farm. But I will be um, taking you on the road. I'd love to take you to some festivals and some really nice gatherings. And can I ask what this space actually cost you to build? I haven't really tallied up everything too much. It's under 20,000, yeah, but that was mostly when I got some, um, some skilled craftsmen to help me out, I, I really enjoyed being able to bring some local talent and to employ them uh, to do like the French doors and help with the table. But that did cost some money. And you know, if I built it again, it would be a lot cheaper. Yeah. Definitely the second that you're doing anything that's out of the ordinary, the cost can quickly increase, can't it? Because you're testing things out and there's no guarantee that anything's going to work. Yeah, and I, I kind of started um, making it a little more fancier. I, I was going to do something really simple just for myself, but I thought, that, well, you know, if, if the farm can have this as a, um, a farm stay, you know, people could come and stay in and pay a little bit of money, the money could go to the farm, that would be a, a really nice thing. So I thought of making it a little bit nicer so people could come and stay in it and have an amazing farm experience. I would love for people to come and spend time and being on this beautiful farm and enjoying a structure that I built. So I'm really looking forward to sharing it with other people. And uh, but it's just a, a place for me to come, just to be in, in tune with nature and just relax and be in a peaceful place. I really, really love being here. And I, and I look forward to building other unique structures that are just fun creative wise and hopefully be things that will inspire people to do things they would love to do. You know, just show people that you could just go off and, and make things happen. If you could dream it, you could make it happen. The incredible amount of work that has gone into this space is evident everywhere I look, and the end result is absolutely fantastic. Thank you mm. so much for showing it to me. Thanks, Bryce. It is so difficult to see a project like this and not instantly fall in love. So much love and creativity has gone into the build of this space. Steve set out to create something very playful and that is exactly what he has done. I've been impressed with his past projects. I'm super impressed with this one and I cannot wait to see what he does next.